In this video, I'm going to discuss with you how to set your uh, score goal, how to set your exam date, um, how to set up a study schedule, what materials you need to use, and give you some information about the exam. Step one is definitely an exam of endurance. Um, it really tests how long you can sit there and keep answering questions without getting tired and just being like, I don't care, C, 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 right? So it is about eight hours long. I mean, there are seven blocks that are one hour each. Um, I think the board changed it to 40 questions now in every block. That might mean that the um, actual questions are much longer than they used to be. So you really have to be good at your time management skills and you have to have that endurance to uh, stick it out till the eighth hour of this exam. So when you start studying for step one and you go online and you try to find all of the resources that you can be using, um, you can get a little overwhelmed. It's really easy because there are hundreds and thousands of resources that you can be using. But if you want to get to the bare bones of the matter, there are three resources that you have to use. So the first is UWorld, which is a question bank. The second is First Aid for the USMLE, which is your review book. And the third one is something called Pathoma. It's an online subscription service to be made by Dr. Sitar. Um, he lectures on pathology, obviously Pathoma. But he also incorporates a lot of biochem, sometimes even physiology, a lot of pharmac into his lectures. So it's a really integrated lecture that helps you understand um, how to answer multiple questions. There are two groups of people. There's a group of people when they're studying for step one, they only like to use those bare bone resources. And that in addition to maybe taking the NBMEs, which are the practice uh, tests for the USMLE, they have actual uh, previous year's USMLE questions in them. Uh, you can do that too. I mean, everyone has a different way of studying and you have to find what is right for you. And if your basics are excellent, if you always got really high grades um, in your classes and you think that, you know, you're going to do really well, then I suggest you take a practice exam either an NBME, a Kaplan diagnostic test, or one of the USMLE RX tests, then after that you can know that are you really doing as well as you think you are? And if you are, then stick with the bare bones. Just do UWorld at least twice, do Pathoma properly, and uh, obviously read first aid uh, cover to cover multiple times, as many times as you can. Just try memorizing that book. So, and then you're good to go. However, if you, like me, weren't like topper in status, if you have a little bit more, you need a little bit more revision, you need a little bit more time, then there are other resources that you can use, especially if you're not a US grad, you're an international grad, and you have time. You will need different resources. You can't keep doing the same thing for three months, right? It's gonna get really boring. You have to always um, have this kind of interactive learning going, a lot of repetition and interaction with the content. It's not like you just sit in front of your computer and you listen to lectures and you think you can go and give this exam. You really can't. You have to sit there and actively learn. And for that, you need to, for me at least, I needed a lot of different types of um, stimulating activities to keep my brain entertained when I was studying for this exam. The bare bones technique is for those who have just less than two months to study. And so they can't really um, you know, use so many resources. It would be too much for them to handle in just two months. I do think that you need four months to study for this exam if you're an international grad. I have broken it down into each month what you should use, which resources you should use. beginning, before you do anything else, take your first aid, go to a one of those like Xerox shops or like a Kinko, Staples, whatever, get the binding taken off, hole punch it, and put it in the binder. 
I know some people think this is really old fashioned to do and if you're more of a computer nerd and you can use everything electronically, you can um, annotate electronically and you're comfortable with that, then do that instead. Um, then you don't even need to buy the actual physical first aid, right? But if you have bought it, then I really suggest you take the binding off and you hole punch it, put it in a binder so that when you're going through it, you can add more papers, you can add your own notes. Especially with when you're doing DIT, they have a lot of workbooks and I really found it um, especially uh, helpful to use the neurology notes that DIT gives you, their workbooks, and put them in that binder so that when I'm reviewing, I can go through those because I found that there are some parts of first aid that you know really didn't cover those topics. And I know that sometimes people say that those aren't high yield, but when we're studying, we really want to get um, a good idea of everything, not just what's in first aid, right? You want to go above and beyond as well. Okay. okay, so say you have about four months to study, right? So let's break it down month by month, which resources you should be using. In your first month of studying, you should be using Kaplan, the Kaplan QBank, and Pathoma. Maybe throw in a BRS physiology if you want to. And why is that? Because the first month is not just revision. Sometimes there are some concepts that we just were not taught in school. For example, at my college, I really was not taught immunology. I couldn't um, understand some of the questions. I didn't even know what they were asking. And I basically had to teach myself immunology. So there might be, there might be a subject like that for you as well. And for this reason, I think the first month of your studying in a four month period should really be um, just honing in on those weak areas. So how do you know which are your weak areas? Maybe you don't know. Maybe you think you're really good at even know, but when you go and do the questions, you're really not. So how do you know beforehand? I suggest that if you buy the Kaplan Q bank, it comes with a diagnostic test and you give that at the beginning. Everyone does horribly. Everyone gets like 30%, okay? Mostly, mostly everyone gets really bad scores. So that's okay. But the main thing is that it doesn't matter what your score is in the beginning. What matters is the diagnostic tool that tells you um, how you did according to the subject. So you can really hone in on those subjects that you were very weak in. This is a really great tool to start studying. After you know which subjects you're really weak in and you know that you need to work on those, now we're going to use the Kaplan videos to uh, work on those weak areas. So I suggest working on those first, see those videos, and then do a subject-wise Kaplan uh, QBank set. So you watch the video, you do the set, and I you know, do that the entire month. The only subject that you're not going to do that in is pathology because, I'm sorry, the Kaplan videos just suck. They suck so badly. You do not want to sit there spending agonizing hours doing the Kaplan pathology. It is just no good. Okay, they don't update the videos. The guy who speaks is really, really boring and <laughs> you're just not want to gonna do that. You're not going to get anything out of that unless you are the most sincere student on the planet, okay? So if you're pretty normal like me, then just stay away from that and do Pathoma. Some people do something called Golian. There is a rapid review uh, pathology book by Dr. Golian, which is excellent, but it is so dense that even those toppers who got like 260s, if you read the reviews of that book, they were like, it was too dense, I couldn't finish it. And, you know, I really wish I hadn't gone through it. You know, spend all that time because you can't memorize all of that information. It's really just not humanly possible. I suggest that you get a subscription to Pathoma. It is excellent. It is one of the uh, things that you need in even if you're just doing uh, the bare bones studying for the USMLE. You have to get a subscription to Pathoma.